Use the means of today to reach the people of today. The Church Speaks, an episode where the Holy Father, the Pope, and the Bishops of the Philippines speaks about their apostolic letters and exhortations to all Catholic Christians. To join our voices in the footsteps of Pope Francis' words, this is the mission of the European Laudato Si' Alliance, ELSIA, and the webinar organized to discuss the part that the Catholic community can play in the climate emergency. Our work is based on three fundamental pillars, explained Laura Morosini, Director of Programs in Europe at Laudato Si Movement, Eco spirituality, eco practice, and eco vocations. Father Saracel, speaking from Sharm el Sheikh, COP 27's media area, began by noting the active position that the Vatican acquired in the climate crisis discussion at the outset of this conference. Following Pope Francis' endorsement of the 2015 Paris Agreement related to the environmental crisis, the Vatican has officially become part of the global debate. Father Chiruzia stressed the importance of emphasizing the cry of the poor, especially those from developing countries. Speaking from Zambia, the president of Jesuit Justice and Ecology Network Africa brought to the table the examples of many African population battered by climatic catastrophes such as floods, cyclones, and heat waves. He also reminded the Pope's words in his Fratelli Tutti encyclical, highlighting the responsibilities of the modern society towards developing countries, often damaged by the excessive process of industrialization. It is also an ethical issue, added Father Chiluccia, that makes us wonder how can we all live well? As religious leaders and faithful people, we must encourage hope in the awareness that God gave us immense power to change things. Catholics should think, invent, and try, he urged. At the beginning of the pandemic, Pope Francis called us to imagine the future and how we could make things different. That's what we have to do mobilizing people and keeping up their faith. The first step, according to both the panelists, is the realization that the fact that we are in need of new lifestyles, the encyclical Laudato Si, exhorts us to go back to traditional Christian spiritualities, which basically say that less is more. This means reducing the consumption of goods and reaffirming that materialistic ideals do not fulfill life. We live on a planet with limited resources, but our hearts are infinite. The importance of temperance. The virtue which moderates in us the inordinate desire for sensible pleasure, keeping it within the limits assigned by reason and faith. In every one of us resides the necessity for a purpose, a sense of fulfillment, and it's up to us to direct this desire toward a simpler lifestyle that everyone, including our planet, could benefit from. Let us continue the Pope's reflection on the climate change next Sunday. Prayer for the Synod We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work 
in every place and time in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago Sr., Steve G. Santiago and Family, Stu and Nancy Santiago and Family, Stephen and Joy Santiago and Family, Sally Mae Santiago Lim and Benedicto Lim Jr. and Family, Sunny Boy and Luella Santiago and Family, Fancy May D. Imbong, Mercy Evangelista and Family, St. John Paul II College of Davao, Royal Bread House Incorporated, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Family, Teresita Villa Abrile, T. Linao Trucking Services, Mr. and Mrs. Protasio and Fe Takandong and Family, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Sheridan, JDB Diversified Incorporated, Melvin E. Aviles, Williams Food House, Silvina Datoy and Family, Jess and Amelia Deason, Gus and Sophie, Mrs. Ampi Casas and Family, Adolfo and Malu Ato, Purita and Lorenzo and Family. Offering of the Holy Mass Accept Most Holy Trinity this sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest, I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Amen. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offers, and volunteers of this Holy Mass, especially the sponsoring group. Bolton Elementary School Teachers, headed by the Principal, Mary Jane Salas Sarillana, Noel and Maribel Afable. Thanksgiving Intentions, Elmer Sarillana and Family, Nida Tomalip Anonymous, Magdalena Kukam, Carlos Tan and Family, P.O.P. Salamanca, Pablo T. Sol Cruz Jr., Salvador Family, Fe de la Viga Oy, Risa Flor Oy Llamido, Russell Caballero. Good help. Noel Maribel and Kent Afable. Mercy Evangelista, Ernesto and Erlinda Aguilar, Nelio and Evelyn de la Peña, Lilia and Bonifacio Mabilin, Ronel Mabilin, Vivian Cam, Captain Ireneo and Betty Malano, Maria Lita Montalban. Birthday Intentions Josie Cariño, Mirna Valderrama, Ching Bunguyan, Jade Gross, Floro Aguilar, Linda Luga, Vivian Cam, Nene Villarica. Special Intentions Thanksgiving for Kent M. Afable for passing the 2022 Physician's Licensure Examination. Recovery and Healing of Email Season, Regina Cispedes, Julie Sanz, Linda Torrejos, Rudy Torrejos, Puchuro B. Fuentes, Mary Ann Cispedes, Jimmy Fronteras, Avelina Capinde. For the eternal repose of Rodolfo Sr., Bernardo, Luciana, German, Erlinda, Claudio, Marotas, Julio, Minandro Sr., Anastasio, Filipa, Eduardo, Ernesto Sr., Jessica, Manuel, Renerio Sr., Conrada, Adelaida, Leoncio, Damaso, Floro, Feli, Linda, Christine, Merlin, Adele, Adela, Carlos, Cassiana, Felicidad, Emmanuel, Sr., Jerónimo, Isidro, Maria, Julia, Natividad, Macra, Antonio, and the victims of war in Ukraine and in all parts of the world, all the souls in purgatory, all deceased benefactors, sponsors, and cooperators, the Pauline's Media Mission. Prayer for the Sick, 
Lord and Father, God without end and Almighty, through your grace, you gave us strength and help in our weakness. In your mercy, touch your sick people, deliver them from their sicknesses, and restore their good health, so that assured of your goodness and love, they will praise and thank you in your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today is the last Sunday of the liturgical year. It is appropriate that on this day, we proclaim Jesus Christ not only as our personal Lord and King, but also as King of the universe. He is King by birth because he is the Son of the Eternal Father, from whom all kingly power derives. He is also King by conquest, for He triumphed over sin and death through His glorious resurrection. He should also be King by acclamation, as we proclaim with our voices and our lives that He is indeed our Savior and our King. On this day, we thank Him for the innumerable spiritual graces He has given us in this year, which is about to end. The presider of this Mass is Father Greg Damundamon, OSB, St. Benedict's Monastery, Kugun, Digo City. The choir during this Mass is the Family Blessings Choir of San Isidro Labrador Parish, Catalunan Grande, Davao City. Let us joyfully celebrate the Banquet of Love. Please stand as we start the Holy Mass. Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, the, the grace and peace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are celebrating the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ as King of the Universe, or as we used to call it, Christ the King. And this is also the last Sunday of the ordinary time. And so therefore, without delay, Without hesitation, let us approach this throne of grace, this throne of mercy, the very love of God in Christ Jesus. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate this mystery of great love of Christ for us, let us first acknowledge our own sins and ask God's pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Son, the King of the universe, grant we pray that the whole creation, set free from slavery, renders your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaims your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The proclamation of David as King of Israel foreshadows the enthronement of Jesus Christ 
the descendant of David as the eternal king of the universe. The first reading, a reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel, and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him King of Israel. The Word of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice at the things that were said to me. We shall go into the house of the Lord. Our feet were standing in thy court, O Jerusalem. which is built as a city, which is compact together. For thee the tribes goes on, the tribes of the Testimony of Israel to praise the name of the Lord because their seeds have sat in judgment, seats upon the house of David. the Colossians, St. Paul immortalized for all Christian generations the absolute preeminence of God's incarnate Son, the King of the universe. The second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created 
through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross. Through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. the kingdom of our father David that is to come. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself above him there was an inscription that read this is the king of the jews now one of the criminals hanging there reviled jesus saying are you not the christ save yourself and us the other however rebuking him said in reply have you no fear of god for you are subject to the same condemnation, and indeed we have been condemned justly. For the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes, but this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Today you will be with me in paradise. This is how the Lord normally respond to those who approach his throne of grace his throne of mercy his love his kindness and his healing and we could remember in the sacred scriptures in the four gospels whenever someone would approach the lord asking for his mercy 
asking for his forgiveness, asking for his healing, he would not delay. Immediately, the Lord would respond and the Lord would heal right then and then. That is normally how the Lord would respond to anybody and to all of us who are humble enough to approach him, to ask for his mercy, to ask for his forgiveness, for, to ask for his healing. And this is also what we have heard today in our gospel. When the criminal now recognizes his own sins, his own wretchedness and misery in life, now approach the Lord asking for his mercy, immediately the Lord said, said to him, Today you will be with me in paradise. That is, he did not say to this man, wait for a while, in three days I will be resurrected and then you will be with me in paradise. Or you wait for a while until we are all dead and then we can be in paradise together. But rather the Lord immediately responded today, now na, bili ugma, bili sunud ugma, but rather today, Indeed, you will receive this very grace by which you are asking for from me. And that is the kind of God, the kind of King, the kind of Lord that we have. And so therefore, what is far more beautiful is that it is an encouragement for us. It is a very beautiful consolation that when we ourselves is in the state of brokenness, woundedness, in the state of misery and wretchedness because of some problems and difficulties that we are encountering in life because of our human frailties and weaknesses. When we approach the Lord, He would not just simply wait in His throne, sitting there until you reach His very throne before His face. That is not the kind of God that we have. He will not wait, but rather, just as the Lord had presented to us in a parable of the return of the prodigal son, what kind of father we have in heaven. This very father who sees the son in his misery and wretchedness, and yet at the same time full of humility and of contrite heart, the father ran towards his son. And with an open arms, he embraced his son in his welcoming embrace, in his loving embrace, in his forgiving embrace, in his joyful embrace. And right then and then, the father rejoices with all the angels and saints because his son has been lost and now is found. He was dead and is now alive and that is what the father we have in heaven and that is what the lord jesus christ we have as our king he will not just simply wait in his throne until we reach him but when he sees us in our misery and wretchedness in our brokenness in our fear approaching him in the state of humility and trust immediately he will run towards us and embrace us with his grace of healing and peace. That is Christ the King. That is why the Lord himself several times in several ways and in many ways told us, for example, in the scriptures, that what pleases me most is not your sacrifice nor your burnt offerings, but rather a man whose heart is humble and whose spirit is contrite. And in the book of Sirach, for example, he said that the prayer of a humble man penetrates the clouds and it never ceases until it reaches the throne of God, where that very prayer is answered by God himself. Or in the second book of Chronicles, the Lord told us, 
that if my people whom I have called will humble themselves and pray and do penance, then I will heal their land and give them peace. For a humble and contrite heart, according to Psalm 51, you will not spurn, O Lord. And so therefore, it really pleases the Lord if we approach Him in our misery and wretchedness and yet full of trust and confidence in His mercy and love with all our humble and contrite heart. He will not wait for us. He will run towards us and embrace us with His healing love and mercy and so therefore my dear brothers and sisters what we are celebrating today with this kind of reading that we have just heard is a very beautiful reminder that the kind of king that we have is not someone whom we are supposed to be afraid to tremble before him because probably we might be condemned and judged because of our sinfulness but rather, it is a very beautiful reminder for us that the kind of king we have is a king of mercy, the king of love, the king of healing. And so therefore, in times of trials and difficulties, in times of our brokenness and misery, and even in our sinfulness, we should not be afraid to approach him. But rather, with all our trust and confidence in his divine mercy, and yet at the same time with our humble and contrite heart like this man in our gospel today and approach the Lord and then like what he had heard this criminal in our gospel we will also hear from the Lord himself telling us today you will be with me in my paradise. Let us now proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of Mercy, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, was substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic Apostolic Church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered together as God's family on the solemnity of Christ, the King of the universe, let us present our petitions to our Heavenly Father for the needs of all mankind and our own. Let our response be, Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. For the church, the body of Christ, may she be evermore the generous instrument of Christ's kingly service to all human beings by promoting peace, cooperation, and justice. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. For the Holy Father, our bishops, 
and the clergy. May they remain faithful to their commitment to use their God-given authority to serve the poor and the weak with humility and sincerity of Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. For all those who are working to make the kingship of Christ a living reality, may their commitment to bring the love of Jesus to all cultures and homes be crowned with success. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. For all those who live in ways that are opposed to the teachings of Christ, may they, like the good thief, realize their mistake and give their full allegiance to the King of Heaven. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. For all of us, may our faith in Christ the King propel us to act with urgency in building His kingdom of peace, love, and justice here on earth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. For all those who have fallen asleep in death, trusting in God's mercy, may be accepted in heaven, especially the victims of the war in Ukraine and COVID-19, the deceased members of the sponsors, benefactors, and cooperators of the Pauline's media mission. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you gave us Jesus as our King of mercy and love. Make us worthy subjects of so glorious a King and heralds of his love to all. We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Sisters, that our sacrifice is acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and good of His holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son Himself bestows on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he accomplishes the mysteries of human redemption 
and making all created things subject to his rule. He presents to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so, with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, again giving you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we are gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Romulo, our Archbishop, and all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people whom you have redeemed. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be co-heirs eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. for the coming of God's kingdom in the words Jesus himself taught us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we are always freed from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, you have said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. And so, Lord, do not look on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer to each other our sign of peace. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, happy are we who are called in his banquet. Lord, I have never believed that you should enter under my roof, but when you say the word, and my soul shall be For those who cannot receive Holy Communion, we pray the spiritual communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me, I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart, detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart I love you above all things because your infinite good and eternal happiness. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pope John Paul II, my beloved predecessor, a sincere biography written by Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI about Pope John Paul II. Available at the Pauline's Media Center, Bolton Street, Davao City, Philippines, at 200 per copy. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And the Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Let us go in the love and peace of Christ. Let's be to God. Thank you.